Dr. Nambi, at the uh, Red Note World Congress, you presented a talk on temporary scleral buckling surgery, Back to the Future. Can you sort of outline your talk and what, what it was all about? Sure. If you ask a retina surgeon, what's the purpose of retinal detachment surgery? Most of them will say, silly question, the purpose is to reattach the retina, hopefully in one operation. If you ask a cataract surgeon, what's the purpose of cataract surgery? They never mention the word cataract. They say, the purpose of my surgery is to restore vision. If you ask the patient who has a retinal detachment what the goal of the surgery is, it's to restore vision. And yet retina specialists throughout the decades always talk about single operation success and very few of them talk about vision. Vision is much more than visual acuity. Vision includes not only visual acuity, but how you perceive the environment and how the two eyes are working together. So if you do a, a procedure that causes strabismus or tearing or astigmatism or myopia, these folks are not going to be happy. And so what we're trying to do is how can we improve on the visual results? Now I personally think that pneumatic retinopexy gives the best visual outcome. But scleral buckling is a great operation that's fallen out of favor. Uh, it's minimally invasive and uh, very inexpensive to perform. The vitrectomy is what everybody tends to do. Well, people argue, well, if I do a scleral buckle that induces myopia, it induces astigmatism, it makes the objects look smaller. Sometimes people complain of irritation, the buckle gets infected. And so my quest for the last four years is to develop a scleral buckle that doesn't do those things, to build a better mousetrap. And so what we came up with the idea after trying many things, we tried to emulate the link-off balloon we, with different materials, modern day materials, we couldn't do it. Uh, so we came up with a design uh, that we, we call a temporary scleral buckle. Because if you remove the buckle, all of the bad things that a buckle does goes away. Through the work we've done with pneumatic retinopexy and with the link-off balloon, we know that you don't need a permanent buckle in many cases. So why not take the buckle out? Well, it's sort of a pain and difficult to take the patient back to the operating room and remove the buckle. So if we could create a buckle that was easily inserted, let's say with two absorbable sutures that dissolved in two or three weeks, we could then do a cut down in the office, if we designed the buckle properly, that we could then grab the, the implant and remove it. And so that's what, we, that's what we've done. And uh, we've designed a buckle that has uh, the configuration that it's a circumferential segmental buckle. Uh, it subtends four clock hours. It has uh, the circumferential element would go at about the equator and the radial element would be used to prevent torsion of the circumferential element uh, and, uh, there's a, uh, and make it easier to remove so that um, it would be read readily visible to take out. And that's the bottom line. Now you might say, well, <clears throat> if vitrectomy works so well, why do I want to do this buckle stuff? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Now, right now, the government now is going to look at things and not only uh, pay you on what you do, but how, and how inexpensively you do it. And although I'm not in favor of the government telling me to, how to do anything, I think the, the way that we're going to be directed is in that, li is in that line. Um, the, the government has also cut down reimbursement for vitrectomy, so a buckle and a vitrectomy are paid almost the same by the government, so there's no longer a financial incentive to do a vitrectomy. And don't get me wrong, vitrectomy is a wonderful operation. Uh, but it is much more expensive to do. The packs are expensive, the instruments are expensive, and you can do a scleral buckle basically in a tent. Uh, with a cryo instrument and in many cases you don't even have to drain. So that there are both financial issues and uh, uh, anatomic issues. One really in interesting uh, 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 point that um, was made to me in the, the latest IRIS survey by Bill Rich, uh, he shows that many more vitrectomies are done than uh, scleral buckles. But the reoperation rate within 90 days is much higher with vitrectomy. 
That, I don't think that's because the retina is redetaching, but it's because the people are going back probably with cataracts and need cataract surgery. So if you, if you bundle everything together, when you do a vitrectomy and, and a fake eye, you're probably going to have a cataract, uh, uh, cataract surgery is going to be in your future. So we think that going back to scleral buckling, you don't get cataracts, and if we remove the buckle uh, after two or three weeks, you're not going to have all the, the side effects of a scleral buckle. So you get the, both, the best of both worlds. So basically, are the outcomes in the long run better with, with, the, with the new technique? Well, the, the, there shouldn't be any difference in the single operation success rate with our scleral buckle and the conventional link-off sponge, because basically all you're doing is you're imbricating the sclera, and so the, there's no real difference in, in the buckling procedure, except this is designed to be removed.